Hi guys, Ross here and welcome back to another video. So in today's video, I'm going to be doing a breakdown slash tutorial of this still life render that I made the other day. It did really well and a lot of you guys wanted to kind of get an insight into the process. So I thought I would make a video like that today. So without further ado, let's dive straight into Cinema 4D and kind of run through this project. So we're starting off in Cinema 4D with a brand new project file. And before I like to dive into kind of my projects, I usually get a mood ball together, which you can see on the right hand side. I use a program called PureRef. I'll put a link in the description. Basically, it's a mood boarding program. And the great thing about it is that you can keep it on top of whatever window you have open on your PC. So uh, you'll see throughout this video that I have it on top of Cinema 4D. So I can constantly have it as a reference on the right hand side, which means I don't have to constantly flick and flick back and forth between different programs. So you can see I have set up the scene here. We're already diving into it pretty quickly, but the first thing I started with was the wine glass. Um, this was straight from the content browser in Cinema 4D. And the reason why I started with a glass is because I wanted to set the scale for the project. If I was to start to build the other elements around and then drop the wine in afterwards, I may have the scale wrong and then I need to readjust. Whereas if I put the main subject in first and build the studio around that, I can make sure that I'm using the correct scale. So drop the wine glass in, put a cube and a wall behind it. And then to start to work on this cloth, it's a pretty simple setup. I just grab a plane, add enough subdivisions that it creates quite a smooth cloth feel and then add a soft body tag to it. Um, I then also add a collider tag to the surrounding objects, which allows it to collide with them. And um, yeah, that is pretty much the setup for that. I think I did tweak a couple of the settings in the soft body tag itself, but um, nothing too crazy. You can see here, I'm starting to bake out the uh, soft body simulation. So the cloth simulation. And what that does is basically, it's always gonna have that same cloth animation because when you don't bake an object, basically every time you go back to the beginning of the timeline, it's gonna give you a slightly different result because in Cinema 4D, there's kind of like an internal seed which randomizes every time you replay that simulation, uh, which is why sometimes it can take a while to simulate. But when you bake it, it's going to fix that specific animation in place, which also then makes it quicker to simulate. So we've got the cloth in place. Um, and then you can see I've just dragged in some Quixel Megascans assets. So we've got the lime and then we've kind of got these uh, peppermint sage um, <laughs> foliage elements, I suppose which I've dropped into the glass. Now you'll notice the glass has changed. That's because I used a lathe object, which basically allows you to create a spline. Um, and when you drag it into the lathe, it's gonna revolve it a 360 degrees around that spline. And it's a really simple way to create any kind of like pottery uh, or glassware. Uh, we do actually change the method for this um, a bit later into the video, um, but I'll talk you through that when it, when it gets to it, which I think is actually coming up pretty soon, to be honest. So what I'm doing now is I'm setting up a separate area light or actually a spotlight for the caustics. This is basically kind of, um, if you ever look at a water bottle that's maybe in the sun or next to a bright light, it shines kind of these uh, lights off the bottom of the bottle. And this happens with any refractive material, whether that's metal or glass. Um, and you can see here kind of on the redshift render view, how we're starting to get these really nice kind of glows come out of the bottom of the glass. So to do this, you usually have to set up quite a bright, um, quite a bright and direct light. So a spotlight works perfectly for that. Uh, and then it's just a case of going into the settings and enabling caustics. So you can see here I'm modeling a new glass object. Um, we're actually doing this with a cylinder this time. And we're trying to go off the reference that's happening on the right hand side. Uh, I just do want to shout out that this piece was inspired by a great still life photographer called Mary Russell. I'll drop her Instagram in the link below. She's got some really awesome work. Um, and I did use other references, but kind of the majority of it was inspired by the piece you're seeing on the right hand side in that pure ref mood board. So big shout out to her. Um, I'll drop a link in the description. So yeah, I'm using a cylinder this time. Um, this allows me to kind of control the topology a bit more, allows me to keep it a bit more low poly and use subdivisions to really drive um, the smoothness of it. And it kind of just makes it a little bit easier and gives you a more realistic result. It allows me to create a thickness to the wall and then also put a liquid inside 
uh, which you can kind of see in the glassware now, which really helps to kind of add another layer of depth to the piece because you can see the refractions of that um, foliage asset through the glassware, which kind of just adds a nice detail. So I added that green gradient into the glass like the reference we're seeing on the right hand side. And that was a pretty simple setup. I've literally put a green to white ramp into the refraction color because by default, uh, the refraction's white. So if we just tint it green a little bit, it's gonna change the color of the glass. So add that in and then I'm also adding just some imperfections such as scratches and fingerprints. Again, just trying to dial in a little bit more detail, add to that photorealism um, and starting to just layer up different effects to, to get it closer to as photorealistic as possible. So here I'm starting to build the lighting and the scene itself. I wanted to give it this natural kind of window lit feel. So I start off by trying to use a plane and dragging that into an atom array. Uh, which is a pretty simple way to set up a window and um, we do get some quite nice results but in the end it wasn't giving me the result I wanted so I actually dived into the scene from my previous tutorial about uh, interior lighting and I just drag in those windows from that scene into this one um, and that seems to work a little bit better. So it is important to build your scene outside of what your camera is seeing because that is going to affect your lighting, especially with uh, glassware like this where you're picking up the reflections and refractions from all around you. Uh, you really do want to build up the scene just a little bit just so you can get more realistic lighting and uh, reflections and refractions in your glassware. Um, it seems a bit tedious, especially if you're not seeing it in the scene, but you never know if you want to like switch up the camera angle. Uh, you've got that extra, le extra level of detail there if you need it. So you can see we're starting to get some really nice detail from that window now. And um, we're actually able to kind of shift where the focus of this piece is, um, which is really nice. So now we're just dialing in those core sticks like I mentioned earlier. And now we've added that green color into the glass, we're getting some really interesting results which uh, is really nice as well. So here, just going back into those surface imperfections and tweaking them slightly. Um, they do actually affect the caustics quite a lot because if you have quite a rough finish to the glass, it's gonna smooth those caustics out. Um, whereas if you have a very clean, uh, sharp glass with sharp reflections, you're gonna get more interesting caustics. So it's kind of just finding a balance um, a nice balance to get some interesting caustics. So here working on the texturing, again diving into Quixel and they've got a really good collection of textures in there so I just grab one of their fabric ones and I do tweak it slightly. Um, I typically kind of will drag in a material and then just tweak it to the kind of look I'm going for. Maybe I'll start to layer it up with some extra things as well so you can see with that concrete texture. Uh, I dragged it in but I had to adjust the scale, change the kind of color and the hue of it, and then I layered it on top with some more concrete textures just to kind of help, uh, again, build in that realism, add some extra level of detail, which kind of all adds up for the final piece. So I'm trying to keep it with that still life vibe. So it's quite like neutral but warm colors at the same time. So the concrete has got this quite warm color to it. So does the cloth. And then for the floor, we just give it more of like a a neutral concrete texture I suppose and you can see here I'm being like heavily inspired by this inspiration on the right hand side um, and I do actually try to go for this kind of blue velvety glossy I suppose silk material um, but I didn't feel like it was really working with the piece again I wanted to keep it with that still life vibe so I think having these more kind of neutral warmer tones um, worked better for my piece in particular. So I'm pretty happy with how this is looking. So now you can see I'm starting to adjust the post effects. Um, so looking at the photographic exposure, which I typically will always enable um, just to kind of get more realistic lighting results from your camera. Um, and then also going in and adding a LUT just as kind of like a subtle color correction. So you can see there, I was just adding some bubbles to the inside of our glass, which are really subtle. You can't actually really see them unless you zoom in close. Um, but again, just dialing in that detail. And the way I did that was just by creating some spheres, putting them in a cloner and selecting our glassware object, um, kind of as the mesh to clone onto and then changing it to volume. So it's gonna clone those bubbles inside the glassware. So 
to finish off this piece we're diving into Photoshop doing some really subtle color correction um, just bring a, a few more green tones into the piece to kind of make those elements pop within the glass adding a subtle kind of color correction and warmth to the piece to kind of drive home that still life feel and then that is pretty much it so hopefully you guys found this breakdown helpful if you did let me know in the comment section down below I'd really appreciate it if you did like this video hit that thumbs up button hit that subscribe button, hit the notification bell, you know the drill, and I will catch you in the next video. Alright, peace.